So the most common implicit scheme is something called a new mark beta. And while we talk about it like it's one thing, it's really a family. Uh, there's certain variations of certain variations of this that give you different formulations. Um, so the kind of standard new mark beta, you're going to use a discretization where where this u tilde n plus 1 is Right. And I really hate this, but I'm, I'm deferring to convention here because if you notice, this u tilde is indexed n plus 1, but it's only a function of things in the past, right, at, at n, things you know. So a more sensical thing would be to call this u tilde n. But if you look at the literature, it's, it's always done like that. So I'm going to defer to that. Okay. So then your velocity Is this guy? So beta and gamma are parameters that you can choose, and your choice of beta defines the scheme. And we'll see in a second that one choice of beta gives you back an explicit central difference scheme. Right. So this is sort of a generalization, uh, and and gamma is a damping parameter. So it adds a viscous damping on the velocity. And this is important because now we're talking, we're going to take longer time steps. But there's also you know, higher frequency, there can be higher frequency information in the system that when you take a large time step can cause numerical ringing. And this, this parameter can damp it out. Now one good thing about poroelasticity it's usually the viscosity in the pore fluid will automatically damp it out. You don't need any extra damping because this is truly artificial. And so then we'll, we can solve for For beta greater than zero, you can solve directly for the acceleration in terms of the displacement, like that. And then just a couple of, <coughs> if beta equals zero and gamma equals a half, you have the explicit central difference scheme that we just described. If beta equals a half, and gamma equals a half, you have undamped a trapezoid rule. And this is because the damping is proportional to uh, one half minus gamma. So if gamma is one half, then, then the damping is zero. <coughs> yeah, so if you, you choose a uh, gamma greater than one half, then you get some damped response. That is uh, 
proportional to gamma minus one half. I wrote that backwards. And these fam what's nice about these families is that they are unconditionally stable. Meaning you can take arbitrary large time steps for beta greater than gamma over two greater than a quarter. So when we solve these things, we solve it with basically Newton's method. So we're just like we talked about last week, or yeah, last week. We're going to define a residual looks like that. And remember that we can, our tangent stiffness matrix that we use in Newton's method is like this. So we linearize the external, the internal and external forces independently. And then we use Newton's method that I described last time. And you'll notice that if, if in the quasi-static case, the mass matrix vanishes, right? And the thing reduces to the quasi-static problem. So flowchart for implicit would be initialize again the initial velocity, initial displacement, initial stress times zero. Compute F zero, compute and then we estimate U new with either the old value of U or utility. And then we begin our Newton iteration. Which, you know, consists of compute F at U nu. Compute acceleration to find a residual. Compute tangent stiffness um, 
modify the tangent stiffness for boundary conditions. And I'm going to go over here, F, solve. Check convergence. And then you'd go back outside the Newton iteration loop and update the displacement. So U, U to N plus 1 would be the converged Newton. And then if you want to check energy, you can. And then once you're done with that, go back here. All right. So real quickly, 